I invite you now as we are about ready to center yourself, uh, turn off all the other things that may be making noise around you, uh, focus now with silent prayer and meditation as we listen to the prelude and I light the candles to open our time for worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I'll invite you to join now for the call to worship that you will find on your screen. Let us be gathered where we are, yet together. Those of us who are tired and wish to be renewed. Those of us who let us be gathered where we are, yet together. Those of us who are suffocating and yearn to breathe free. Let us be gathered where we are, yet together. Those of us who are tossed about and long for a place to belong. Let us be gathered where we are, yet together, and let us worship God. in our opening hymn. Now I want to call upon Colleen Hannes, who is our liturgist for today, to lead us in the prayer of confession. 
Let us confess our sins before God using the prayer of confession shown in your bulletin or on your screen, followed by a time of silent prayer and personal confession. Merciful God, we confess our failure to be what you created us to be. You alone know how often we have sinned in wandering from your ways, in wasting your gifts, in forgetting your love. By your loving mercy, help us to live in your light and abide in your ways for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Friends, hear the good news of the assurance of pardon. God loves you right where you are, just as you are, but God longs for you to be all that God created you to be. And God wants to love you into that. God so loved you, so loved the world, that God gave the only Son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have life rich, abundant, and eternal. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, knowing that we have been forgiven, let us pass the peace one to another as we can over Zoom and let the peace of Christ be shared to one and all. Amen. Amen. And now I'm going to invite our liturgist Colleen Hannes again to uh, guide us in the first scripture lesson today. A reading from the book of Psalms, Psalm 23. Listen to the word of God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Here ends this reading from God's word. Amen. And now at this time, I want to invite all of the children to come toward their screens, wherever you may be. Go gather the munchkins who have been listening, and maybe now they get a chance to hold the device or gather near you in prayer. And I'm going to get Grace's help this morning. So let's start our time together like we do every week with our special prayers. So if you could, put your hands together, close your eyes, bow your heads, and repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, we love you. We love you. We want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. Help us to listen. Help us to listen. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, hey Grace, could you lead the children's message today? Because um I'm gonna take a nap. Here we go. <clears throat> Mommy, wake up. But I'm so tired. Um, so I'm going to curl up right here and, and try to sleep. Uh, Jesus said that he would give us rest. And so I'm really going to try to fall asleep here on the Zoom so people can see what real rest is. Mom, I don't think that's what Jesus was saying. It's hard to sleep with all these people looking at me. Mom, I don't think that's what Jesus meant. So, resting with Jesus isn't about falling asleep on Zoom? No, it's about 
feeling rested in here and in here. Well, and how do we do that? Deep breaths, prayer, serving other people, laughing with your whole body, learning how much God loves us so we quit trying to control everything. Kids are pretty good at that. You can watch us. Give me that blanket. <laughs> Actually, you know what would be better? Let's lead everyone in the prayer that Jesus taught us. That helps my heart feel rested. Okay. Let's put our hands together again and lead that prayer that Jesus gave us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Grace, and thank you, Becca. Our second scripture lesson is one they were talking about, one where Jesus talks to all of his disciples, to all of us, about what it means to rest in him. I invite you to join with me in listening to God's word as we hear from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 25 through 30. Listen to and for the word of God. Matthew writes, At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now let us join in prayer. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and may the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, friends, perhaps like me, last night you watched the fireworks display from not only here in Washington, D.C., but in New York City, as they were televising those on national television last night for all of us. And maybe you had some folks doing some fireworks in your neighborhood or wherever you happen to be. But as I watched the fireworks in New York, I was reminded, seeing the Statue of Liberty, of those words, those familiar words inscribed on the statue. Give me your tired your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest tossed to me. I lift my torch beside the golden door. Now, if you have seen the Statue of Liberty, have ridden Staten Island Ferry and seen Lady Liberty from the water as I have, as did so many immigrants when they first arrived in America, as did members of my own family in 1882 when they came from England to New York and then got on another ship and went around to Galveston, Texas. Well, 
if you've seen them in person, those words have great power. They have great power even if you haven't seen them in person. For if we let them, the words have in them great power to move us, to touch us close to where we live. Of course, the hard truth is that these words are less actual than they are aspirational. We're not there yet. We are still struggling to live into these words, to really live out their truth. Still, Frederick Buechner is right when he says the reason these words have such power is because one way or another, they are words about us. Whether we are rich or poor, whether our forebears came to this country on the Mayflower or a slave ship or a 19th century clipper or a 21st century jet, or if our forebears were indigenous Native Americans who were already here, all, all are part of who we are as individuals and as people. They are our common past. Yet the power behind these words lies in far deeper places than even all of that. They speak to our past, these words. Yes, they also speak to our present, to right here and now, to something deep within us. In countless ways, both hidden and not so hidden, it is you and I who are the tempest tossed, waiting and yearning for the great promise of a new life, one we've yet to discover. We are the ones who are yearning to breathe free. To read these words written for immigrants of the past is to read words that are also written for all of us immigrants right now into this unknown future that we all are. We're all immigrants going into this unknown. And so it is with the words of Jesus in our lesson from Matthew. Past and present. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The words are like healing balm to a wound. They are first words said so long ago to people so different from us, and yet they are now words that sound as though they were written today for people just like us. As we now have entered into the month of July, we are also now in our fifth month of living in a worldwide pandemic and its accompanying economic recession. We are also into our second month since the killing of George Floyd and the nationwide protests against racial injustice sparked by his murder. And in my conversations with many of you, with my colleagues in ministry, with my neighbors, with my family and friends, I get the distinct sense we are reaching a new transition in our common journey. We're beginning, just beginning to see this may be more of a long-term thing we are living through than perhaps we first realized. There's a, a single word that characterizes this transition that word is weariness. As more than one person has said to me, it's almost as though we've been running a marathon of, course, of sorts, running, 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 and just as though we, we're getting to what we thought was the end of the marathon, we're told the finish line's been moved way down the ways, out of sight far away to an unknown end. <sighs> we've got to keep running. And throughout this pandemic, <laughs> we've been zooming into meeting after meeting, turning our homes intended for rest into offices for work and classrooms for teaching, wearing masks and maintaining social distancing, 
postponing, canceling, or adjusting our plans for birthday and graduation celebrations, for weddings, for funerals, for family reunions, and for vacations, all out of concern for health and safety day after day after day after day till we're not sure what day it is when we wake up in the morning. As Nadia Boltz Weber writes, everyone is exhausted right now. Parents, activists, cashiers, people who are just now learning about systemic racism, delivery drivers, the unemployed, the chronically sick, ER nurses, the police, those who fear the police, firefighters, the elderly, performers with no hope of an audience anytime soon, clergy, social workers, those who can't pay their rent, and everyone who has to spray something down for the 1,000th time. We are weary. And just then, just when we thought we might have a chance of seeing a lull in this pandemic over the course of the summer months, new states have become hot spots for the virus. Just when we were sure COVID was more of a concern for older adults and young people were pretty much safe, now, now in recent weeks, most of the new cases are with young people. Our days have become like that of the Red Queen in Alice in Wonderland. As she says, now here you see, it takes all the running you can do to keep in the same place. It feels like that. All the running we're doing, we're just staying in the same place. It feels like all over again, we are headed into the unknown. It's all so very wearying. And we know all too well how weary we are. We long for rest and for refreshment for our souls. And these words of Jesus, promising rest for our souls, sound so good to our ears. Very, very, very good indeed. They're what we need to hear right here and right now. Yet the rest of Jesus, the good shepherd who makes you lie down in green pastures is not about time off from work and getting things done. It's not about sleeping on Zoom. It's about time off from worthiness and proving yourself and doing just for the sake of doing. The rest that is ours in Jesus comes from the promise of the gospel, that Jesus came to save sinners, that Jesus came to heal and to love and to save the sin sick and the overfunctioning. that Jesus came to give rest to the restless, to offer a home to those who don't know where they belong, and a way into the unknown for all those who have no idea what lies ahead or where they are going. This, this is the gift of Jesus, the gift of rest, but it's what Jesus offers with this rest that might surprise us, because what Jesus offers us is not a hammock, but a yoke. This yoke, though, is not our own. It's Jesus's yoke. So this is not an additional command so much as it is an invitation to share the load of life and the weariness of work with Jesus. We're not in this alone. It's a come to Jesus invitation for we who are weary to come home to him, to find our rest in him. For if we would but open the eyes of our hearts and look for him, we'll find Jesus where we might least expect him to be, in the need of our neighbor, in the doing of the work of seeking social and racial justice. 
even in the Zoom meetings and the phone calls, in the wearing of masks, in the maintaining of social distancing. In all of this, every bit of it, we discover Jesus is already there, waiting for us, encouraging us, forgiving us, holding and bearing us. This is what makes the burden light and the yoke not just easy, but joyful. Because the thing is, we all carry heavy burdens. It's just that it's only when we realize we all carry heavy burdens that Jesus' its invitation makes any sense at all. And suddenly, is no longer hard, but easy. Even, well, welcome. I want to close with what I think is a, a parable of sorts. Five years ago, the author Laura Hillenbrand, whom you may know from her book, Sea Biscuit and Unbroken, did a crazy thing. She moved from Washington, D.C. to Oregon, largely just because of a photo she saw of a house with its view of a mountain, of a river, and of trees and parks in Oregon that, as she puts it, folded over one another into infinity. All those hills, all those trees, the river, the water. She just up and decided to buy that house and move across the country. One of the first things she fell in love with when she arrived was a maple tree in the backyard of her house. It was a big, beautiful tree. She wrote, it was so in love with life, it swallowed the sky. But just last year, her neighbor came by and said, the tree was overawing his yard, devouring his trees, blocking out his view. She knew as one who loved her view, she had no right to let her tree do this. So inevitably, an arborist came and cut the maple far, far back. She couldn't stand the sound of the saws and the chipper. She went into the house and stayed there all day and it was almost more than Laura could take. She went out at the end of the day in the evening to see what had happened and I'll let her finish the story. She writes, in the space once crowded with leaves, there was something new. A little dogwood had long hunched beside the maple, almost unseen, slowly drowning under it. Now, now the dogwood was at last breathing the sunshine and in the new clearing of sky, the view tumbled on forever. The maple was not gone, but reimagined, and with it, the dogwood underneath. Now, th that same evening, a scrub jay came and lit on the bare dogwood branch. Done with her day's labor, she rested there until the last light died and then flew away. The next evening, she was back. And the evening after that, and the evening after that, and one day, she brought her baby. And every evening since, they have come, both of them, landing on that dogwood branch. After these recent days of rending, of loss, of violence, of grief, of convulsant change and weariness, may we find a beautiful, grateful reimagining May we land as the bluebird does, resting and peaceful. Indeed, may it be so. Come home to Jesus, my friends. You who are weary, come home and find rest for your souls. Amen.
Amen. Now, friends, as we find the deep rest that comes in prayer, we will lift up in prayer those who are new to our list, particularly Jan Stengel, who has been hospitalized the last couple of days for an infection. And we hear from Tom that she will hopefully be back in Maple Grove by the end of this week. We pray for healing and support for her. It's definitely a hard time for anyone to be in the hospital. We pray for Adeline Deal, who is a child uh, in the church who has had chronic health issues and her parents have celebrated their anniversary uh, while they were caring for her in the hospital and caring for their uh, young son at home. And we pray that Adeline would be surrounded with love as we know that she is. Also, um, those of you who are, are really m missing the interaction, um, we pray that you would join us on Wednesdays at 9.30. There's gonna be prayer and care. Um, there's a group that's been gathering for that. And we pray that you would be uh, able to click in. It's just a half an hour, but we, we read the Psalm, we pray together, we pray through the whole prayer list by name. Uh, and you're welcome to join us at that time. Also, there are some Bible studies that are starting up. Jen Bouchong is inviting any of the women to join her for a Bible study starting this Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. And then starting this Wednesday, we're going to have a Wednesday morning pastor's Bible study that'll begin right after the prayer and care call. And that'll be our way of wrestling and reading through the scripture text that will be the sermon the next week. And it is it is one of the most renewing things to be able to study scripture together. And we hope that that is something that uh, can give uh, both structure and deep meaning to your days. As we come to prayer, one of the things that has been the most uh, gift, I think, of online worship services is the ability for you all to add your specific prayers to this. So uh, in the chat function, if there is a person or situation you'd like to pray for by name, so when we get to that part of the prayer, I will say all of their names. Together now, let us join our hearts in the prayers of the people. We come to you, Lord Jesus, indeed with a weariness tugging on our soul. It's a tiredness from the work of rearranging our lives the mental work of relearning what used to be second nature, God, a renegotiation of what used to be uncontested and easy. The fuel light came on in our soul a while ago and we've driven miles without a refueling station. And by that we mean the places where our souls naturally fill up in the embrace of friendship, in the sanctuary, of corporate worship in the energizing shared spaces bustling with humanity. So yes, Lord, we confess that at times we are weary to the bone and, and we feel just in saying that this deep rest soak into our souls. We feel the rest of breath that you breathed into us long ago. We feel the rest of the body of Christ that you are feeding today in communion. We feel the rest from creation that chirps and buzzes a kind of joy and rootedness that feels like prayer and makes a sanctuary around us. Yes, Lord, we catch our breath and we leak out tears of gratitude. Gratitude, Lord, gratitude for nurses and caregivers and doctors and first responders and teachers who protect us and pollinate our lives with hope. Gratitude for all the faces that come to mind when we feel proud of this country. Gratitude for all the faces who reached out to us during our time of need. Gratitude for those whom we grieve, but who even in this moment add 
to your wondrous light, O oh God. Gratitude for the chance to sit at a table with a dinner roll and a splash of juice and know your love, O oh God, that it courses through our veins in Jesus Christ. And to know that in your love we are carried. We pray for those who are lifted up this morning. We pray traveling mercies for the Miller families this week. Prayers of healing and strength for relatives, for Marie and Albert and Sally and their families who are battling COVID. We pray for Mike Fudge's friend, Joanna, whose cancer is now terminal. God, we pray for her husband and her kids. Lord, speed your comfort. We pray, pray for safe travels for Rachel and Olivia and Evie. Grace and guidance for all of Becky's family, all of those who are healing from COVID. We pray that there would be wisdom and guidance and miracles for medical people and governments to overcome this pandemic through you. We pray for Debbie's brother and her sister-in-law on the sudden tragic death of her son, Matt. Oh, Debbie, gosh, we pray with you. May God's comfort and peace surround your entire family. God, we pray with Liz Barrows for her coworker, Gretchen, who has had a renewal of breast cancer. God, may that tremendous sisterhood, that whole community of cancer survivors, and indeed all people, give support and prayers and love and encouragement for her in this time. God, we pray for those in our Trinity cycle of prayer today, for Julia and Fred Stewart. We pray for Ashley and Michael Strouser and their son, Alan. We pray for Bob Sutter today. We pray for Lisa and Brian Taggart and their daughters, Delaney and Lucille. We pray for Knox Presbyterian Church in Falls Church, Virginia, and for the Korean Presbyterian Church of Rockville, Maryland. And God, now in the silence, we pray to you those things that are perhaps too private for us to speak aloud, or even we speak them aloud in our quiet Zoom space and trust that you know us completely, Lord. This we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you all for adding your prayers and for being attentive to one another. There are so many different ones of you who have made that effort to reach out to people whose faces you're not seeing here so that we can make sure that they are, are connected, even during this time of, of uh, feeling like we're sort of strewn to the four winds. Now we come to the time of our offering, and that means that we make our offerings online. We consider ways that God is calling on us with our the, the tools that we have every single day of our lives. God is employing us. God is commissioning us for service. The Link Food Pantry has been going full steam to continue to meet the needs of hungry people in Herndon and Reston. Lunch for the Soul is happening Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in the community. And we're still planning on feeding young minds on scripture this summer with Vacation Bible Camp. We are calling it Staycation Bible Camp. And that means there's going to be online activities for kids uh, with good theology, with uh, activities for them to be able to learn scripture, for them to be able to, um, we're going to try with, um, with the work of the regathering task force to even have a time together on the church grounds outside um, at some point that week. So we hope that 
Those of you who have kids or kids in your neighborhood, you can pass those materials along to them. Please have them register online. Uh, there's gonna be craft kits given to them before Vacation Bible Camp starts. And if you'd like to be part of any aspect of organizing this or teaching, um, just send me an email or even put a note in the chat and I'll reach out to you. Um, and Stacy Blythe is leading this as well. So we give thanks for that. Jane Bourne uh, has been on our craft team and her abilities to do crafts and to make them happen is a gift from God, no doubt. So we lift those up to the Lord. Amen. And now we come together with one of the great ways that we are blessed as the people of God, and that is through the gift of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever we come to this table, I remember the, the early disciples who were walking to this town called Emmaus. And it was Cleopas and the other person who doesn't get named. And they were walking on an unknown road and they really thought that the best days were behind them in their life. They thought that what was coming was grief and violence, uh, displacement and fear. And the loss was the only thing they could taste in their mouth. And that was when a stranger walked alongside them on this road and started to teach them scripture, which I, it doesn't seem like scripture said that they appreciated because they stood there looking sad. It was not until the breaking of the bread that they recognized their risen Lord and Savior there with them in their midst. It wasn't until then. And friends, that is what we are invited to enact again today in our own tables with the elements that have come to our homes by the grace of God and to feed our actual bodies on hope and on the truth of the resurrection, giving us all of what we need to be restored in grace, to be encouraged to build Christ church and to continue along this road that has always been God's. You are invited. Together now, let us get our worship elements together and share the Lord. And together now, let us join our hearts in the great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, wonderful God, maker of heaven and earth, with joy we praise you and give thanks to your name. Great and wonderful are your works, Lord God Almighty. Your ways are just and true. Therefore, we lift our hearts in joyful praise, joining our voices with choirs of angels and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We praise you most holy God for sending your only son to live among us sharing our joy and sorrow. He told your story, healed the sick, and was a friend of sinners. Obeying you, he took up his cross and died that we might live. We praise you that he overcame death and has risen to rule the world. He is still the friend of sinners. We trust him to overcome every power that can hurt or divide us and believe that when he comes in glory, we will celebrate victory with him. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we break bread, and share one cup, giving thanks for your saving love in Jesus Christ as you raised our Lord God from death and call us with him from death to life. We give ourselves to you to live for him in joy and grateful praise. 
Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and cup, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, when our Lord Jesus was at table with his disciples, he took bread. And after giving thanks, he blessed and he broke it. Saying, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, our Lord took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant for the forgiveness of sins sealed in my blood. Drink this, each of you, in remembrance of me. Now let us share in the meal. And as we do, let us listen and enjoy special music from Tom Pearson. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy burdened, and I shall give you rest. Take up my yoke and learn from me. fun rest for your souls is my youth is easy and my burden is the Lord is my shepherd I shall so much, Tom. Together now, let us join our hearts in prayer after communion. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that through word and sacrament, you have given us your Son, who is the true bread of heaven and food of eternal life. So strengthen us in your service that our daily living may show our thanks. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
as we come now, <clears throat> we thank Sandy and Tricia for their duet on that beautiful hymn. <clears throat> we come to closing of our service. Please stay on afterwards for the virtual coffee time that we share together in small groups. And hear now this benediction that comes to us, this charge from Eugene Peterson's paraphrase of our lesson from Matthew. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. And may the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and abide in you this day and forevermore. Amen. <clears throat>